Welcome to this talk on the ultimate way to integrate Cameo and Doors Next. So what we're going to do is um, we'll, we'll have a close look on how can we integrate Cameo and uh, Doors Next, an application of the Jazz platform. Um, I have to emphasize that the exact same way also applies to Enterprise Architect and to MATLAB Simulink. And of course, we will use global configuration management to not make things too complicated, I will focus on Cameo Magic Draw to Doors Next in the next minutes. Okay, so here we are in Doors Next and what we have to make sure first is that our global configuration is set up properly. So I will navigate into that global configuration and what we see here is that we only have one requirement stream in here. And of course, we also want our Cameo model in this global configuration. So we add, um, um, go into our um, config picker and we add um, from our project, we're using SmartFacts as a middleware here from our project, we add version two of this Cameo model. And um, here we are, now we have set up um, a global configuration with one Cameo model in a certain version and a stream of a um, requirements project. Okay, so let's go back into that stream, navigate into, let's say, um, stakeholder requirements and add some links. So we um, select the requirement here and just go ahead and say we have a traced by um, architecture element. And now um, we have an extensive picker where we can search, for instance, for a diagram. Let's take this one here and quickly add it. So we have added one first diagram um, and let's use a different link type to add another, another link, um, not to a complete diagram, but um, to um, a model element inside a diagram. Here is my diagram. Um, I zoom in and I select this block to be linked to this requirement. So we have added two links now, two different link types. And now we do the big magic uh, rich hover. That is what makes OSLC really fun. Um, we just hover on, on the link and we see what, what uh, the link target looks like. Um, and uh, here, uh, the second link we have added is only a, um, a link to a model element. So we get a property grid, but we can also hover on the referenced by element. And this will show us where in this diagram we have actually linked to. So very convenient, very easy to add links and consume them. Okay, now let's check if this global config mechanism really works. So, um, I just switched the global configuration to the one without Cameo. I say, okay. And um, yeah, it happens what we would expect. Um, the link compartment is empty. So there are no links uh, here right now. And um, when, we, when we have a look into that global configuration, what's in there, we see that there is um, a MATLAB Simulink model and there is an Enterprise Architects model. So let's go back and um, and quickly add two more links. Um, so we again use trace by architecture element. Um, now I know there is a clutch model of Simulink in here. Uh, clutch. We quickly search for that diagram. Yeah, let's take this one and we add another one traced by. Um, we use an enterprise architect diagram. We also want to include, there's an EE diagram, something here, and we add that one. So we quickly added two more links, two diagrams, and uh, this one is enterprise architect. Just you see that all this works exactly the same way. Inside this delegated UI, there's even advanced functionality. So I can start commenting or I can use algorithms uh, like uh, visual um, version comparison or version diff. Here, this tells me that um, compared to version one, this version three um, got some more ports and uh, as a consequence, some blocks have been changed. Um, so there are some really convenient 
um, functionalities in here to better understand the model. And of course, the same thing also works with MATLAB Simulink. As I said, everything is the same. It doesn't really matter if you use Cameo, Enterprise Architect, or MATLAB Simulink. Uh, linking is exactly the same way. Um, and now let's quickly switch back to our old global configuration with Cameo. And um, uh, as we do that, we see that when we select the same requirement, here we are back and have our two links to Cameo. So um, it works very well, very powerful concept, very easy to use. I think uh, global configurations are a, a really a great, great concept that, that also saves a lot of money in engineering if you um, use it the right way. Okay, so let's quickly have a look on the other side. Let's jump into Cameo and check if our links are, are there. I mean, OSLC links are always bi-directional. So having added them in Jazz, they should be visible in Cameo. Um, good, so here we are in Cameo. We have loaded our SmartFX plugin, and this allows us to select a global context. So we want a Jazz global configuration as context for our uh, Cameo model, of course. So we select that this one here. This is the one we had selected in Jazz. We can do the decomposition of this global configuration and see what's in there. Here is our Cameo model, and here is our Doors Next stream. OK, let's um, select this as our global configuration, our global context. And now we um, pull up the um, requirements or the, the links uh, table. And uh, as expected, we see our two links, the refines requirement link and the traces requirement link. The traces requirement link uh, is linking 14,007 to the whole diagram. And um, the economy context block is link also linked to 14,007. OK, so um, of course, we can um, open up the delegated UI of our doors next requirement here in Cameo and read all the details. We can also jump into doors next from, from here. So this will um, load doors next. It will um, navigate into the right project, into the right global configuration, highlight uh, the, the right requirement, and show us our links. So navigating back and forth is also um, possible. And of course, we also want to add links in uh, Cameo. So um, we just open our global configuration and say we want to load that stream into our plugin, load that into our bulk data grid. And um, this is very easy. I just have to select um, the right module. And now I get all the requirements loaded live from uh, Doors Next into Cameo. And uh, you see the, the format is very similar to, um, uh, to the original uh, Doors Next application. You have the same uh, fonts, you have tables, you have images, um, all this. And now adding a link is very simple. Just select a requirement here, 14,106. And then we select this block here. And from uh, the local menu, we select Add Link. And we, of course, we have to um, select an appropriate link type, let's say, satisfies requirement. And um, now we generate this link. You recognize that uh, in that moment where I generated that link, this uh, vertical gray bar became dark gray. And that means this um, requirement has uh, a link. Um, OK, so let's quickly look on the other side here in Jazz. What do we have? 14,006. And here is our unit cost context. And when we hover on it, um, we expect to get the property grid of this element. We can uh, go down to the reference by column, and this will show us where we have linked to. So very, very convenient. Um, we, we make full use of uh, the power of global configuration. We can. Uh, add links from both sides, we can delete links from both sides, we can consume them, and we can navigate. So um, yeah, very smooth and uh, convenient to manage links with OSLC between Cameo and uh, Doors Next. 
But the story isn't quite over. There is a third perspective. I was talking about smart facts as a middleware, and here we are now in smart facts, and there are some really cool things I'd like to show you um, in smart facts. Also, uh, smart facts works with global configuration, so we um, can go into our picker and we pick the, the, the global configuration we have used in Cameo and in um, indoors next, and now we can use that global configuration just as we know it from uh, from Cameo and um, uh, load our requirements grid into Smart Facts. Um, stakeholder requirements here. Um, again, we want to expand the first three levels. And um, yeah, as uh, as you can see, this is this is very similar to um, also here. This is very similar to. Uh, two doors next, it's exactly the same um, formatting. And now we have again these gray bars. And uh, now here we had linked to unit cost uh, context uh, to a block. And this block uh, has this um, a property grid. And within the property grid, um, yeah, this element is part of this diagram. And we just load that to the left. And now uh, the really fun thing is that you actually see the links. You see different link types um, and you can see the links and you can add even more links and this is much more fun than doing this in Jazz and in Cameo um, because it is so easy to generate a link. Okay, so yeah, SmartFacts is the basically the read-only platform that allows to consume all the information you have generated. You don't need a modeling tool and you don't need a requirements management tool. You can just see both perspectives and also um, their links. At the end, I'd like to show you one more thing, our analysis center. So the analysis center allows us to check our traceability coverage, for instance. And um, yeah, let's um, select a, a context. Uh, of course, we use our Cameo model. This is our context. We might also use a, a node inside uh, the model, but we use the whole model as our context. And we say, show us all elements that do not have um, a link to a requirement, so these uh, different link types, and we're interested only in blocks. So we start that analysis. By the way, we can uh, actually store the parameters of that analysis also in our project and just run that analysis anytime we want. And now we see we have a lot of work to do because there there are a lot of um, there are a lot of blocks that are not linked to requirements, and probably that's our, our to-do here. And um, let's pick this one here, for instance. Uh, the brake paddle is not linked to a requirement. Um, we see that that brake paddle um, is part is used in three different diagrams, and I just navigate in one of them. Here is the brake paddle, and let's say, well, okay, let's do our our work and just link the brake paddle to the requirement here. And um, here we go, we are done. And uh, so this is a, a very, very powerful and easy way to go through your list of elements that are not linked to requirements, but have to be linked and to check the traceability coverage. And by the way, um, uh, just do one after the other. You can go back and do the next one. Um, also, I'd like to um, yeah, draw your attention to these little symbols here. Um, so we always work in the right global configuration. You have this um, Cyan symbol here, and this tells me that we are compliant with the global configuration that's set up here. And uh, when we set, select a different version, we get a red triangle instead. And the red triangle tells us that, yes, we are allowed to navigate into that version, but we should be careful. This version is not compliant with the global configuration we have set up here. OK, thank you for watching this. I think working with global config, working with Cameo and Doors Next is really fun. It's very easy to use when you have um, SmartFacts as a middleware. Thanks for watching.